factor the absence of tight end Lynn Dawson suffered a fractured left ankle last week and he had been so instrumental in the successful running game of the Patriots so the veteran Russ Francis back in the starting lineup because of the absence of Dawson the kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser the king of beers Patriots won the toss they will receive Pat Leahy will kick it off getting some help because of the uh, wind here at Giants Stadium and back deep the combination of Sammy Martin the rookie from LSU Marvin Allen the rookie from Tulane here's Allen and he'll stay right there the Patriots will start out from their 20 yard line the quarterback is Doug Flutie John Stevens and Robert Perryman, a successful tandem at the running back position. Stanley Morgan has not been a target in recent weeks of Flutie, who have not uh, been throwing the ball uh, frequently. Irving Fryer, Russ Francis, the other receivers, and the offensive line has been outstanding, anchored by the center, Mike Babb. But you have to look to the right side with right tackle Bruce Armstrong, who has been superb. First down from the 20. And it goes right to Stevens. Picked up four on the play. Scott Mercero, the nose tackle, number 94 on the stop. Mercero with Lyons and Fraze. Fraze winning back his starting job, replacing the uh, retired Mark Gastineau. Baldwin had been the starter. And Alex Gordon is back in a uh, starting role. He'd been out. Although did play uh, briefly last week, coming back from a bruised thigh injury. James Hasty made his return at right corner last week. And George Radachowski replacing uh, the injured rookie Eric McMillan, who's off to the uh, terrific start. This time, Stevens bottled up by Marty Lyons. Lost a couple on the play. Marty Lyons is probably having one of his best years. Marty Lyons is going to tee the guard. When the guard goes, Lyons goes right behind him. The tackle, Via never got down to get him, and Marty Lyons catches Stevens from the backside. So a third down and six. New England from its 24-yard line. Patriots come in fourth in the AFC in rushing, making the jump in recent weeks. But a passing down here for Flutie, who threw only 14 times last week in the victory over Miami. And it was deflected. Intended for Cedric Jones. Mercero's waving his arm, so it must have been him to hit the ball. And, and Flutie trying to throw. It's a little swing pass coming out of the backfield and never gets the ball up. Mercero is coming from the left of the screen. Number 94. There's Marty Lyons, 93. Uh, Radachowski got the ball in the safety blitz. George Radachowski was a teammate of Doug Flutie at Boston College. In fact, during his junior year, they were roommates. Here's Jeff Fiegels. Coming off an outstanding day against the Miami Dolphins. He is back at his 10-yard line. Across to the uh, slippery conditions, the Jets with two men back. JoJo Townsell, let it go. And it is down at about the 43-yard line. A 33-yard punt by Fiegels. And here are the Jets to the offense. Ken O'Brien, who took some hard shots uh, last week from the Indianapolis Colts. The quarterback, McNeil and Vick, are the running backs. Toon, Walker, and Schuler are the receivers. And that offensive line, as we mentioned a moment ago, has taken some hard licks. The latest to get hurt, Guy Bingham, who had taken over at right guard the past two weeks for Dan Alexander. First down at the 43. McNeil to the 45-yard line. Lawrence McGrew, the outside linebacker, along with nose tackle Tim Gold, on the stop. We're just underway at Giant Stadium with no score. Up front, Williams with Gold and Hodge. Patriots have done well despite the absence of their defensive ends, Kenneth Sims and Garen Verris. Johnny Rembert coming off a sensational game last week. AFC Defensive Player of the Week, and this one of the best secondaries in the NFL. Second and seven at the 46. to the ground. This time Johnny Hector stopped by Tim Gold. Short pickup. Two yards on the play. It will be a third 
and five. This wind is so tricky in the stadium. If you look at the flags, they're blowing one way on the top of the stadium, but you take a look at the, at the flags on the goalpost, and they're going the opposite direction. <laughs> but the wind is blowing from left to right. And we indicated earlier that Ken O'Brien, because of the many injuries on the offensive line, has not been able to go deep. He's done it for the most part with short passes. Again, short wind could not be held by Al Toon. Now, Toon caught 13 balls last week, but averaged only eight per reception. You know, it's a short pass that we're talking about. The offensive line held up very well here. Just take a look. O'Brien has plenty of time. He throws his ball on the outside. The ball is wet, a little bit low. Toon almost makes a great grab. That's Merriam on him. Couldn't hold it. Paul, well, what does the uh, the rain do to the punters as we see uh, Joe Prokop uh, get set back at the uh, 32? All they tell him to do is just make sure you get it off. Irving Fire is back at the 10. And Prokop just did get it off. Short punt. And they mark it at the 28-yard line. That is only a 24-yard punt. We'll be back in a moment. For the Patriots, this is the first of three straight games on the road where they have not fared well. Five and one at home, 0 oh and four away from Foxborough, and look at the difference in turnovers. That's the key, the giveaways and takeaways. They take it away at home, and they give it away on the road. Patriots starting out at their 28-yard line, bat the center, Farrell and Wooten at the guards, Via and Armstrong are at the tackles. Doug Flutie has been invincible here at Giants Stadium. One victory at Boston College, seven while in the USFL. Off the roll, Flutie with room, has the first down. So Flutie scrambling to the 45, picked up 17 yards on the play. Interesting to see the stats, 7-0. As a member of the uh, Generals in the USFL, you did all those games, didn't you, Paul? Yes, I did, ESPN? but they also had Herschel Walker on that yes. team. Here goes Flutie. It, it, you give credit to the right-hand side of that offensive line, and that's Armstrong and Wooten. What they did is they sealed everybody back. He just runs a bootleg back to the other side. No one there to get to the outside contain. And there is the other dimension that you get with Doug Flutie. Picked up the first down. From the Patriot, 44. We have no score. Four minutes gone by. First quarter. And he throws on first. Again, it is knocked down. Paul Frames, the six foot five defensive end, deflecting it away. And now critics of Flutie, who look at a quarterback at five foot nine and change, will say, well, that is the problem. Do you agree? I think it is the problem. One of the, one of the, the biggest problems that Flutie has is looking straight down the field. And we're talking about from hash mark to hash mark in the middle of the field because of the big linemen offensively and defensively. And the first thing that a defensive coach tells the defensive lineman, anytime that he cocks his arm back to throw the ball, you get your arms up. It is a second and ten from the 44. So Flutie has had two passes deflected and now unleashes for fire but overthrows. Fryer covered by the right corner, the rookie, James Hasty. On the other side of the ledger, getting back to the subject of, of Flutie, those who support him say because he can run and uh, because uh, technically he is so skilled, it doesn't matter if he's a, a couple of inches under six feet. There have been many quarterbacks even in recent years who have succeeded who have been right around the six-foot mark. The other quarterbacks were able to throw the ball in the middle of the field, Marv. The one thing that Flutie does to drive the defense crazy is if you're an outside linebacker on either side and you have contained, you have to stay there. You have to contain Flutie. You cannot let him roll where he can see the field wide open. You've got to contain him, keep him in the pocket so he has to either throw left or right. He has a third and ten. And again avoids the rush. But he slides short of the first down. Scott Mercero on the cover. A four-yard gain, and that is it for the New England Patriots. Flutie does have 
a strong arm, though. He has a strong arm, and he does see the field well when he gets out. Now, Flutie, when he goes back to pass, like in this situation here, what happens is he sees the middle open up now. He's looking left. He's looking to his right. Now the middle opens up. The one mistake he made was you got to get down just a little bit sooner because Mercer is going to tear your head off. Landing in a puddle of water, the rain falling here at Giant Stadium. Jeff Beagles punting to JoJo Townsell. Five minutes in, first quarter, and the Jets and the Patriots are scoreless. Low snap. Beagles getting it away. Short line drive. Townsell lets it roll inside the 20 yard line. So Jeff Beagles again facing the rush. This time with a 35-yard punt, the Jets will be first and 10 from the 18 as timeout has been called. Looking back at the Jet-Patriot rivalry, it was back in December of 85. Battling in a wild-card playoff game, the Jets and the Patriots, Johnny Hector on the kickoff, coughing it up, and it was Johnny Rembert. On the recovery, a big play as New England went on to uh, knock off the Jets by that 26-14 uh, to 14 score. And uh, there is Johnny Rembert, six-year man out of Clemson, who last week came up with 18 tackles. Roger Vick, trying to go to his left side, was stopped by the outside linebacker Lawrence McGrew, stopped at the line of scrimmage. Remember, the, we were here two weeks ago, and O'Brien wore that mask, that little visor, we did a whole thing on a Darth Vader look. Well, with this rain, you can't do it. You can't wear that mask, and that's one of the problems. Unless he has windshield wipers uh, alongside <laughs> that, that shield. Second and 10 from the 18, and look out. Milford Hodge getting to Ken O'Brien. Milford Hodge, the right defensive end, making his third NFL start. O'Brien sacked five times by these New England Patriots back on opening day. Well, you see Hodge. Here's Haight. He was supposed to block Hodge, and he didn't. Haight is standing there, didn't block anyone, 879, and when you don't block anyone, and we talked about this at the beginning of the show, you just don't have time to look downfield. O'Brien has to throw short passes. It's that young, inexperienced offensive line. First sack of the season for Hodge, replacing the injured Darren Burris at the right defensive end position. Off the third and 18, Hector found a hole, but short of the first down. 12 on the play, but the Jets forced to go into punt formation. Free safety Fred Marion making the stop. So... An exchange of possessions here in this uh, first quarter. Difficult situation for both clubs playing in the rain as Joe Prokop checks in and he will punt from his seven yard line. Leon almost got the last one. Irving Fryer among the leaders in the NFL and punt returns as we look at it from the point of view of the punter Prokop. with this one but again a short punt 27 yards for Prokop and the Patriots will take over at midfield with 7.55 remaining this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League it is intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Jets and the National Football League is prohibited. And this game, the property of the NFL, all rights reserved. So the Patriots starting out at the 49-yard uh, line, very expressive move. <laughs> they did not exactly elbow their way in. Maybe they will be on their way out. Rain keeping fans away. Capacity is 76 plus. John Stevens, the rookie from Northwestern State, and Louisiana with a seven-yard gain will set up a second down and seven. Chicago leading Washington, seven-nothing in the first quarter. Kansas City over Cincinnati. And Green Bay with a three-nothing lead on the Indianapolis Colts. The Packers shut out the last two weeks. Pittsburgh, three-zip over Philadelphia and Detroit in a thrilling matchup, leading Tampa Bay, three-nothing. 
second down, seven at the 46. The backfield of Perryman and Stevens. It is Stevens again running right, broke a tackle, but colored by Lyons and stopped at the line. Marv, when I talked about at the beginning of the show, they would like to throw. The weather may not enable them to do so. But they, New England Patriots, they line up, and they tell you where they're going. Now, here comes Villa trying to get Lyons again and cutting, cutting him off. As soon as that guard pulls, Marty Lyons goes down the line, and they know where they're going to run the football. The Miami Dolphins, Shula said after the game, he said, we knew they were going to run the ball to the right over Armstrong, over Wooten, and we still couldn't stop them. It is a third down and seven. To this point, Stevens only eight yards for carry. Perryman with the hole has the first down. Robert Perryman going for nine. Last week against Miami, he had his best day of the season, 11 carries and 42 yards, and he has complimented Stevens very well. And this is another off-tackle play. They're going to come to the right of your screen, and watch what Perryman does. He just sees the blocking by, by the guard in the center and just cuts it up in the middle, picks up the first down. Of course, again, you've got to bet the Jets were king on Stevens. First down from the 36-yard line. John Stevens playing with an ailing right shoulder. Injured in practice, took a hard hit from uh, Johnny Rembert, although he says he's all right. And uh, here is Stevens to the 35-yard line. Lions and Benson combining. Did you see that time Mercero, number 94, just came straight down the line. He took a, a, a direct line right at Stevens. Didn't look at anyone else. He knows he's, he's, he's going to carry the ball the majority of the time. Now, Mercero, he's over the center. He goes right directly down the line of scrimmage, right at Stevens. He missed the tackle, but slowed Stevens down enough for Lions and the rest of the defense to get there. Second down and eight from the 34. Head coach Joe Raymond Berry said eventually we're going to have to throw the ball. You can't do this uh, every week. It's too predictable. And uh, the Jets continue to look for either a, a Stevens or Perryman. Four-yard pickup. Benson on the stop. But the weather conditions uh, may not lend itself to uh, Flutie putting it in the air. When they go right, they go where Armstrong is. But when they go left, they try to pull the tackle and get him into the play. Here comes Armstrong. He's the right tackle, pulling down the line along with Wooten. Gets an excellent block. You know, a lot of teams don't pull tackles. This team does. It is a third and five. New England at the Jet 31. 425 left. First quarter. No score. Flutie off the roll. Double pass. Incomplete. Perryman could not hold on. So Flutie is now 0 for 4. Two have been rejected. Now, you remember I told you about the defensive linebacker has to force Flutie. When you have containment, watch Gordon, number 55, to the left of your screen. He does not let Flutie get to the outside. Gordon is right there waiting on Flutie. Now he forces him to throw the football to Perryman. The ball is wet. Of course, he also takes a shot by Rich Miano, number 36. But that's what you have to do with Flutie. You have to force him to do something with the ball. And right now, the rain is coming down even harder. And the uh, Patriots will not go for the long field goal. It will be a 46-yard attempt. Instead, going for it, fourth and five. And they're stopped. The New England kicking game has uh, not had a good year. A combination of Teddy Garcia and Jason Starosky, but it's a combination of that and the weather conditions, so they go for it, they fall short, and the Jets will take over. A torrential downpour here at Giants Stadium. Marv Albert with Paul McGuire. Paul, our staff has suggested for you to get a better feel of the game, to be able to relate to the players, perhaps you can do a part of the uh, next quarter from uh, on the field. That's wrong. It is a first down <laughs> from the 29-yard uh, line. As the Jets take over, McNeil picked up a yard on the play. See, when it rains in Buffalo, though, it only rains at night. Reminiscent of Niagara Falls near your hometown of <laughs> Buffalo, New York. That's awful. A small but faithful crowd on hand here at Giants Stadium. That's the uh, first flag of the game. Jerry Mark Bright indicating the hold against the Jets. 
last week. The Jets, who are the fourth most penalized team in the NFL, had an awful day in that department. Called for 14 penalties, only three on the Indianapolis Colts. And the Patriots are somewhere in the middle of the pack in that department. First down and 20 from the 19-yard line. We have not seen a completed pass thus far in this first quarter. Hector out of the hole. Running to the first down marker, Fred Marion pushed him out of bounds. There was some excellent blocking in the line, but tremendous running by Johnny Hector. He makes a couple of moves just at the line of scrimmage, going to the right of the screen. The blocking is there. Schuler blocked down. They block out. There's Schuler's making his block, but he makes a move on Lepet. Lepet slipped. It is wet down there, but Hector made such a great move when he got right to the secondary, and that enabled him to get the first down, or, well, second and one. Ball up to 39. It is a second and one. The tight end Griggs in motion. And the first down and more picked up by the fullback, Roger Vick, who can explode. A 14-yard advance. Marion, the free safety again, made the tackle. This is the offensive line blocking. They've had trouble with the passing, but not with the blocking. Just take a look right at the point of attack. You're going to see the blocker. Chris Well is there, number 61. They get some excellent blocking from Withicombe, number 76. Another first down. Mike Withicombe, rookie from Fresno State, the starter at right guard, replacing the injured Dan Alexander. Fifth-round draft pick. Mike Hayden at the other guard. Jeff Criswell, Reggie McElroy at the tackles. The center, Jim Sweeney. First down at the New England 45-yard line. Here's Hector. And he's hit for the loss. Lost three on the play. Combination of Reynolds and McGrew. There's Reynolds, 95. Second and about 12 at the 47. We talk so much about the running game and in the running game you got Stevens all right you got Freeman McNeil you got Hector on the Jets at Stevens for New England but the guy the most important guy is the fullback in the backfield that time Roger Vick did not get a block and when you take a look at New England on the other side Perryman is the guy that really opens the first hole the first man get the first man out of the way as far as Stevens running the ball second down play and it's Vick Perhaps a yard. McGrew from the outside linebacker position making the stop. The Bears leading the Redskins 7-0. Mike Ditka, to the dismay of his doctors, uh, observing this game on the sideline. So the defensive coordinator, Vince Tobin, is still uh, running the show. Cincinnati jumping in front of Kansas City on an Icky Woods run. Took it in from uh, four yards away. Pittsburgh in front of Philadelphia 10-0. And Detroit. Same score over Tampa Bay. Third down, 11 at the 46. Minute and a half remaining in this first quarter. Patriots and Jets, no score. And O'Brien able to complete. And let's see how they call it. Was he stripped? Billy Griggs, if he made the catch, would have fumbled it. However, it is ruled incomplete. We are set for an update. Let's go to Gail Gardner and NFL Live. All right, Marv, as you mentioned, at Arrowhead, the Chiefs' 3-0 lead was short-lived against Cincinnati Bengals rookie Icky Woods. Four yards up the middle, his ninth touchdown of the season. The Bengals lead the Chiefs by the score of 7-3. Back to rainy Giants Stadium, Marvin Paul. Thank you, Gail. The rain has let up. An incredible downpour midway through this first quarter. The Jets fall short. Once again, so Joe Prokop will punt for the third time this afternoon. It will be a busy afternoon for both uh, punters, Prokop and Fiegels. What New England did on the first punt of Prokop, they rushed him and really put the heat on him. The second time was a, what, 26-yard punt? When you get the punter to start looking up at the defensive lineman coming at you, you've already done your job. You don't have to block it. He's got to keep his eye on the ball. Here's a situation now where I wouldn't be surprised to see the come after him again because they are getting close. And the long snapper for the Jets is Adam Schreiber. That because of the absence of the injured guy, Bingham. Jim Sweeney took over the snapping duties last week, but he has a bad thumb. So Schreiber, a one-time Philadelphia Eagle, doing the 
snapping. That's Irving Fryer back at his 10-yard line. A minute 22 remaining. First quarter. And Prokop gets a better punt this time as it uh, rolls out of bounds just inside the uh, 20. Well, only a 30-yarder, but he has the uh, Patriots down at their 11-yard line. Well, coming up next on most of these NBC stations, stay tuned for the second half of our football doubleheader. Most of you will see the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos rematch of last year's dramatic AFC championship game plus regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Well, the ball spotted at the 16-yard line, first and 10 at the 16. to this point, 0 for 4. John Stevens has been held in check in this first quarter. Roll out off the play action, and it's broken up. Intended for Fryer. Hasty on the cover. It was intended for Fryer. Hasty was on a cover, but Robert Perryman. They did a little cross series in, in the offensive backfield. Flutie rolled out, and Perryman actually ended up right near Fryer. They had two receivers in the same area. Well, someone in the uh, New England area wrote that the Patriot game plan is about as subtle as Morton Downey Jr. They run, <laughs> run, and run. No gimmicks, no trick plays. They come out, they get physical, although we did see one trick play last week with uh, Mosi Tatupu taking the uh, snap from center, and it was a long game. This time, Stevens trying the left side, but picked up only two. Lions and Frey's combining on the tackle. They're just going right at, right at uh, Stevens. It will be a third and eight at the 18-yard line. Not much happening at either end of the field. Well, that last one on downs, if you're just joining us, it was a torrential downpour. They couldn't, New England could not kick a field goal, and it was fourth and five when they ran the ball. And the same results for the Jets on the slippery field here at Giants Stadium. 25 seconds remaining, first quarter. Looney with time now. Intended for Stanley Morgan and almost intercepted by his one-time roommate at Boston College, George Ratajkowski. This was actually a screen pass. It was supposed to be a middle screen. Watch in the middle of the picture. You're going to see the offensive line. Then you're going to see Stevens sneak out. And also Perryman. They're both there. Neither one of them get the ball. Ratajkowski was right there. Almost had the ball. I don't know if Perryman would have been able to tackle him or not, but it looked like a touchdown. Ratajkowski, who may have set an unofficial record for being signed and waived last year, signed four times, waived three times, eventually ended up on injured reserve, but now in a starting role because of the injury to Eric McMillan. Another punting situation for Fiegels. Bad snap. They're going to gobble it up. Played it well. Here's Townsell coming up on it. And it takes a jet bounce. That will go down as a 26-yard punt. Not a pleasant day statistically for Fiegels and Prokop. 11 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Joe Walton in his sixth year as head coach of the Jets, but November and December had not been pleasant months for Joe. Career record in November, 11 and 13. That's the combination December and January, 5 and 14. And the Jets may be fading again, although not too many folks thought that they would be over 500 at this point. Well, they're doing it defensively, putting a strong defense together, even though they're young. First down at the 44-yard line. McNeil running hard. Tripped up by Raymond Claiborne at the line of scrimmage. And that is it for this first quarter. Not much happening in the rain at Giant Stadium. No score. We'll be right back. You look at those first quarter statistics and you see a quarter of futility. This is the type of game that is usually turned around by, by a turnover. 
Radachowski almost had the touchdown, almost had the turnover that the Jets needed. This is the type of game where you stay with the basics. You can't really get fancy doing things because you can't mishandle the ball. That ball is so slippery. That's why the New England Patriots didn't go for the field goal. Second and 11. And O'Brien way off the mark as uh, he took another shot. Milford Hodge on the rush. And O'Brien, no stranger to being uh, shaken up, uh, was hit hard once again. The combination of Flutie and O'Brien, 0 for 9 to this point. O'Brien just threw the ball away. There's just... Uh... And he's no stranger to being sore either. <laughs> Last week they bounced him around quite a bit. Sacked three times last week by Indianapolis. Patriots got him five times opening day in Foxborough. Third down, 11. As we get started in the second quarter with no score. And O'Brien again in trouble. And it is, let's see, almost intercepted. Fred Marion had it, could not hold on. It is ruled incomplete. The pass intended for the wide receiver, Michael Harper. O'Brien threw that ball well, and that and Marion just played it well. You see O'Brien, he's going to be running for his life, but he gets a chance to set up, and he sees Harper coming across, and then right at the left of your screen, Marion steps in, had the ball just for a second, but just couldn't hold on to it. There's Fred Marion. Last week came up with an interception against Dan Marino. And Marino now 3-9 and nine lifetime against the Patriots. Could not get anything going last week. Fryer back. Prokop will punt for the fourth time today. Forty-five yard punt, but it uh, carried in, so the Patriots will start out from their 20. Now to Bob Costas at NFL Live. That's right, Marv. Let's get to something important. A little episode certain to make the next edition of the Albert Achievement Awards at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. A turkey on the field delaying the game. Look at him gobbling up yardage across midfield, heading for the sideline. He's going to be run out of bounds, so stop the clock. Incredible. Marv? Thank you, Bob. Bob's so excited, he sounds hyper. He got hungry, looking at that turkey. No Thanksgiving's coming. It's a first down from the 20-yard line as the Patriots start out with their first possession of the second quarter. Don Stevens handcuffed again. This time, the right inside linebacker, Kyle Clifton. Bears in front of the Redskins, 7-0 on a Mike Tomczak run. Cincinnati with that 7-6 lead on uh, Kansas City. Uh, Lowry hitting from 35 yards out to uh, cut that margin. Indianapolis and Green Bay now tied at the 3. Pittsburgh in front of Philadelphia, 10-7. And Detroit with the 10-0 lead. Second down at 8 from the 22-yard line. Stevens straight ahead. Stevens with his best run of the afternoon. Picked up 21. Kevin MacArthur finally got the wraps on him. Radachowski's going to have to learn how to make some open field tackles. He's number 25. The blocking is excellent here. And Stevens just makes one quick move to his right. And once he does that, you're going to see number 25 Radachowski come by right there. Got to stay on your feet. Get yourself planted. Get yourself upfield. Now, here's Gordon, number 55. He also misses the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. And again, it is Stevens. Lost a yard on the play. The 21-yard run a moment ago by Stevens, the longest of his NFL career. He can play both the speed and power game. He does have excellent speed, very strong, can bench press 445 pounds, but for the most part, he has not looked to go outside. The Patriots think eventually he could succeed also by uh, going to the speed. They run him inside because of the great, which they think is a great offensive line in New England, and they do the job up front. Second down and 10, and here's Flutie floating one out for the first 
first down, Stanley Morgan. Covered by James Hasty. Stanley Morgan has not seen many balls come his way in recent weeks. That's only his 20th catch of the season. 13-yard pickup. Hasty slips on this play. Right there, you see Hasty down on the ground almost. He almost tripped and fell. But Stanley Morgan, the turn he made, he couldn't have stayed in bounds anyway. That's the first catch of the day. First pass completion. First down at the 42-yard line. And the handoff to Stevens. Working his way to the 40, Marty Lyons making the play. Now, in these conditions, the rain falling, the field slippery, the offensive player has the advantage because I would think he knows where he's going. He really does. And, and the defensive man has to, especially on a field like this, he has to sit and be sure exactly what move he's going to make to make sure his feet are underneath him. We saw Hasty go down. I'm, I'm watching Rich Miano, the safety man, he's just coming up to the line of scrimmage, not even worrying about them throwing the ball to Russ Francis. He's playing run all the way. Second down eight. And Brody completes to Perryman. The ball fumbled. Recovered by Hasty. And there is the first turnover of the day. Good hit by Clifton and Benson. So the pass completed for six. But on the fumble, Hasty ran it for 18. This is like the third time I've seen two receivers in the same place. Russ Francis and Perryman. 34 is Perryman, 81 is Russ Francis. In the middle of the field, you see Francis, you see Perryman. Now when Perryman is hit and tackle, watch what Francis does. It's just like, well, the play's over. I look the other way, I'm not going to block anybody. And the ball's rolling around in front of him, not paying attention to the play. Heads up play by Hasty, a rookie from Washington State. James Hasty, a converted wide receiver who has made it back from a hamstring injury. And he has the Jets first out of the Patriot, 48. And McNeil ran into a roadblock. Freeman McNeil running into the combination of Gold and Reynolds. Hasty's a little tired. Don't bother me now. Let me get some. Let me get my win back. So that's a statistic that, that I don't buy. And, of course, here are the Jets 5-4-1, which is over 500, obviously, but uh, not having a wonderful season. It really depends the circumstances of the turnovers gained and lost. And what you do with it after you receive the ball. That's nothing personal concerning our staff putting together these fine stats for us, Paul. A second down and nine. Vic to the outside, but forced out. Picked up three. Johnny Rembert. On the coverage of the fullback, Roger Vick. You know, that, that last play we were talking about, Russ Francis. The play is never done until a whistle is blown by the official. And Russ Francis that time, at the end of the play, look, he's just looking downfield. He's looking at Hasty. Finally, he, then he realizes the ball is on the ground. He thought the play was over. And obviously it wasn't. So the late reaction by the tight end, Russ Francis, back in the starting lineup, replacing the injured Lynn Dawson. Third down five the Patriot 43 first turnover of the game giving the ball back to the Jets and O'Brien incomplete Hector not able to hang on O'Brien is now 0 for 5 and that will be it for this series the punting unit checking in Joe Walton's a little upset, but O'Brien really didn't have any time. They're just, they run a play-action pass on third down. Number one, I don't know why they do that, because they're already playing run. Play-action doesn't fool anybody. And they're just coming. They're going right to the backs and right to the quarterback. They're not even slowing anybody down with play-action. Just go back and throw the ball. Joe Prokop, punting for the fifth time today. Fryer is back. Uh, that was placed well. It lands inside the 10-yard line. Both Prokop and Fiegel's very successful in placing the ball within the 10. We'll be back after these words. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. By Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, the best burgers in the business. And by Norelco Lift and Cut Shavers, we make close comfortable.
We welcome you back to Giant Stadium in the New Jersey Meadowlands. Marv Albert with Paul McGuire. We're early second quarter. The Jets and the Patriots are scoreless. Mosi Tatupu and Marvin Allen now in the New England backfield as they take over at their eight-yard line. And this is Allen. And he is gang-tackled. Allen, an 11th-round draft pick, rookie from Tulane, picked up a yard on the play. Troy Benson able to shake off an ankle injury, made the stop. Scores remaining the same. Chicago with the 7-0 lead. Cincinnati 7-6. Green Bay, Indianapolis tied at 3. And now Detroit over Tampa Bay, 10-7. So Doug Flutie looking at a second down and eight. And Flutie throwing to the sideline. It is broken up. Stanley Morgan battling with Bobby Humphrey. Flutie showed me some arm on that play, and he threw the ball to Stanley Morgan, but Bobby Humphrey was right there. You couldn't play it any better than Bobby Humphrey played it. His job is to stay on Stanley Morgan one-on-one, -on -one, really not getting any help from the safety. He never got over there. Gets right in between and knocks the ball away. Excellent play, and it was a good throw. Last week, it was Bobby Humphrey hit with that controversial pass interference call against the uh, Indianapolis Colts, and that play took place uh, off an interception. And the end zone, third down and eight at the 10-yard line. And Flutie again goes sideline, and it's broken up. A hard hit by Ratajkowski. So Morgan appears to have it, but then took the pop and could not hold on. Flutie read that beautifully because I think they cut the Jets into a zone defense, and he saw Stanley Morgan breaking to the outside. Ratajkowski is the guy that came over and makes the play, but look at Flutie. He reads it, he sees the zone, then he sees Morgan. Now Morgan is open there. If the ball is right on target, Morgan should have caught the ball. I should have had it. Actually, the hit came after uh, the drop. And here's Fiegels punting from his end zone. So Fiegels, who has changed his punting style, Paul, says he is now a quick three-stepper. Okay. Would you explain that? No. <laughs> I know he's getting the nose of the ball over. Townsell letting it carry out. 34-yard punt. A very rough day for the punters, Fiegels, and Prokop. We'll be right back. Fiegels is still a three-step kicker. We're going to take a look at him. Look at the strides. It takes about six to seven yards to kick the ball. What he's talking about is he's speeding it up a little bit more so they can't block it. Actually, he's now a quick three-and-a-half stepper. <laughs> so uh, counted out here. Jets take over. Sixth drive of the day. And the pass off the mark. Again, O'Brien took a shot, this time from Tim Goad, the nose tackle. That's the third time the Jets have started out in New England territory, but uh, really have not been able to do much. Well, that, that, that graphic shows it. You've got five possessions, five punts. And look at the plays, though. That's the most important thing. You had three, 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 three. In one time, they got six plays out of the deal. However, the rain has let up. We had one enormous downpour midway through the first quarter. Second out and 10 from the Patriot 44. And O'Brien unleashes and has the first down with the tight end, Mickey Schuler. 16-yard advance. They're trying to cover Mickey Schuler, the tight end, with Ed Reynolds, number 95, the linebacker. And watch when Schuler comes down in the middle of the screen here. Reynolds comes down, and now he goes over. He sees Schuler all by himself. Marion, the safety, is there, but about eight yards off. No one's covering him. I think that Reynolds went the wrong way and then read Schuler too late. At the first completion of the day for O'Brien, he is one for seven. Down from the 27. O'Brien whipped the time, and Schuler could not hang on. That previous reception by Schuler extends his streak. He's caught a pass in 74 straight games. He is playing hurt, though. Injured ribs, pinched nerve, not the same player in recent weeks. All right, you're going to see Schuler come off again, and watch the guy that ends up on him. There he is, number 95 again, and that's Reynolds, the linebacker. That's his man. The ball was there. He just dropped it. 
second and ten. The Jets at the Patriot 27-yard line. No score. Six minutes have gone by here in the second quarter. Hector. And Johnny Hector running well. Bumped out at the marker. Chased by the strong safety, Roland James. And let's see where they mark it. Mickey Schuler, not only is he an excellent pass receiver, especially possession pass receiver, but he's also a pretty good blocker. We're going to see Schuler trying to block here. Now, what his job is to take McGrew to the inside. He does his job. See, McGrew can't get out to the outside. If he keeps that linebacker from containment, he does the job, whether he knocks him on the ground or not. Ball is marked at the 19. It's a third down and two. Now, Sohn in motion on the right. Hector has the first down, and a penalty marker is thrown. Fred Marion, free safety, making the stop. We have been penalty free in this uh, first half. Only one called prior to this one. It is a hold against the Jets. Reggie McElroy came out. He came out to block LePet, and what happened when he went to block him, he slipped. Instead of going through the play, he grabbed him as he was going down. So the ball has been placed back to a third down and 12. And we're told that the rain has affected the uh, mic of uh, Jerry Markwright. Fumble recovered by O'Brien. And he just uh, falls on it. And the crowd beginning to get restless. You can hear the, the booing reaction. <laughs> Come to think of it, if I was sitting in the rain, you yeah, might be a little restless. And, you know, you can't be overcritical because the ball is wet. And here's here's the situation where you're going to try now, what, a 48-yard field goal, 47, 48-yard field goal. And everything has to be perfect on a field goal anyway at this distance. But now you're talking about a wet ball, being able to hold it, get it down, and the kicker not slipping. And the half mark to the right, so the angle to the left, and Leahy... away block but Leahy does it from 47 yards away to make it 13 of 17 this season the Jets three Patriots nothing Jets head coach Joe Walton realizing that points will not be coming at a furious pace today Enjoyed that 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy just a moment ago, and that equals his longest field goal of the season. Pat Leahy has had another solid year, and he's given the Jets a 3-0 lead. He's just a tremendous field goal kicker. He really is. Always has been consistent. Last week, uh, did have a problem with the snap. So uh, had that 51-yarder block, puts it uh, on the ground, and fielded by Sammy Martin. Martin to the 30-yard line, returning it 18 yards. Stopped by John Galvin, rookie from Boston College. Chicago extending its lead to 17-0 over Washington. Cincinnati remaining in front 7-6 over the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Colts move in front of Green Bay, 6-3. Pittsburgh over Philadelphia. San Diego with a 3-0 lead. Detroit maintaining a 10-7 edge on Tampa Bay. We are just under eight minutes remaining in this first half. And the Patriots first down from their 30-yard line as they line up in the eye. Flutie chased by Mercero, now by Lyons, could not find a receiver. Scrambled for five, run out by Troy Benson. That's just good defensive secondary coverage, Marv, when you have no one to throw the ball to, and the time that Flutie has. 
Now, they get him running. He's, he's a little play-action pass, and he wants to set and take a look. And he looked right away at Francis going across the field, number 81. But you see Flutie now wants, wants to throw the ball. There's just no one to throw the ball to. You give credit to the secondary, then Ed Benson finally runs him out of bounds. It is a second down and five from the 35. The Jets three, the Patriots nothing. Here's Stevens. Picked up three, Kyle Clifton on the stop. And the Patriots, like the Jets, have been struggling here in the rain. When you take a look at you're looking at all the punts and everything down on downs and stuff. But the most important thing, the number of plays they're running in a drive. Here we see three threes, a four, six, and a seven. They're just not getting first downs, and it's the key to moving this ball on, a, on, a, on the wet field that it is. You've got to continuously keep the ball and try to get some decent field position. Third of two, Morgan is to the left. Flag throw, Stevens to the outside, and has the first down. We'll have to check out the flag. He was tripped by Radachowski and Fraze. Jets offside. Referee Jerry Mark Bright. Yes, uh, calling the offside against the Jets. Offside. Number 94. Defense this. First down. And the mic uh, has been repaired. Correction. Now we take a look at here's the man Number that's offside. Mercer row number 94. And right there. Very nice. Oh, you like that? Perfect. I got it. I got it right over the circle. And then he goes outside. See, he's doing exactly what I want him to do. Except one problem. That was phrase. I see. It wasn't Mercer. And it is the first down. At the 43, Robert Perryman uh, picked up a uh, Two on the play, but a flag is thrown. We'll call that a uh, computer virus, a technical uh, <laughs> difficulty on the uh, part of Paul and his <laughs> telescreen. All right. Well, you have a holding penalty against New England, and I'm not going to point this one out. Holding number 61. First down. The intent was in the right place. Ron Wooten, the right guard. <laughs> Uh, called on the penalty. A reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. It will be first down and 20. The Patriots from their 33. The only score, 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy. Six and a half remaining. First half, big rush. Flutie able to elude it. Goes in complete. Morgan, the intended receiver, covered by Hasty. There was a just a, Kyle Clifton came right up the middle. But look at Fruity's arm. Watch him fake right here. He'll put his arm up. As soon as he does that, that holds Clifton for a second. Just enough time to get Fruity to the outside to try to scramble and then throw back across the field. And that is the toughest pass in the world to throw, running to your left and throwing the ball back to your right. Two out of 11. And Flutie now facing a second and 20. And now throws the middle. No one in sight for the Patriots. But a flag thrown again. Head holding against New England again. And that, that refused this penalty. Did you see the pass that Flutie threw, Marv? From here, when he throws over the middle, the ball takes off. It goes up in the air. It doesn't go on an arc. And even though Russ Francis is 6'12", you can't, he still can't get the ball. This ball just takes off. And again, the penalty on the right guard, Ron Wooten. All right, from behind, watch Flutie. Watch what this ball does. See the ball taken off? It's going straight up in the air. There's no arc on the ball at all. There's just no chance for Russ Francis to get to it. Francis does go 6'6", uh, 242 pounds. There's Russ replacing the uh, injured Lynn Dawson. I'm like 6'12". Yes. <laughs> Second down and 30 from the 23. 
Draw play for Stevens. Nowhere to go. Taken down by Benson. It sets up a third and 27. There's out of Gordon. Made his return against Indianapolis last week. Played sparingly back from a bruised thigh. And back in the starting lineup today. Reggie Dupart now has checked in, replacing John Stevens. Dupart playing despite an injured shoulder. It's too much to think about picking up on third down, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Flutie kind of dump it to Dupart and then let him try to run as far as he can with it. And Dupart, the intended receiver, intercepted off the deflection by Howard. Well, Paul, as you said, he was looking for Dupart in the flat. But it was overthrown, and Howard came up with it on the deflection. It is overthrown, but the thing that Flutie did, going to Dupart out of the backfield, you've got to get it to him a little bit sooner, not when he's setting up. Dupart is going to come out to the left of the screen, and Flutie has the time to throw the ball, but he waits for Dupart to settle down. When he does, he overthrows him. The ball's tipped in the air. Howard gets it. Interception. Dupart makes the tackle, and the Jets have great field position again. For the Jets, their 18th interception of the season. That is most in the AFC, and it equals their total for all of a year ago. Jets first down at the Patriot, 35. Here's McNeil. Brandon McNeil dancing for the extra yardage. Beautiful run. Milford Hodge and Roland James. You know what right this about. play was? Marv, this was a screen pass back to O'Brien. And McNeil never had a chance to do it. Here's the flip. Now watch the offensive lineman. will turn around and come back to their right. Chris Well will come back. And Freeman McNeil just did not have a chance to throw the ball back. He was forced to run the ball. It's not a bad play after that. You pick up, what, eight or nine yards on the play. But they were going to throw a screen to O'Brien. He hadn't been hit enough. It was designed as a uh, flea flicker. Instead of second and one, down at the 26, Wesley Walker, 85, in motion. Now Hector, hit for the loss. Johnny Hector, trying the circle route, stopped by McGrew and Hodge. Five minutes remaining now in this first half. Still Chicago, 17-0 over Washington. Kansas City moving in front of Cincinnati, 9-7. In the second quarter. And Philadelphia now by one over Pittsburgh, 14-13. That last play, a loss of six, third down and seven, back at the 32. I didn't like to play. If you got second down and one, you go straight ahead. They're running the ball straight ahead. O'Brien with the time has won. occurred in the Miami game Ken O'Brien overthrew Wesley Walker several times it happened last week and then on one pattern Walker busted the pattern he took the blame for that but right here he had a touchdown O'Brien was never looking at the beginning at Wesley Walker now this ball he would have never been able to stay in bounds anyhow anyway look at where his, where his foot lands trying to catch it with one hand trying to stay in bounds but the defense Claiborne had him covered but when O'Brien had that much time to throw the ball, you can't stay with him that long. It is a fourth down and seven. At the 32, if the Jets went for the field goal, it would be a 49-yard attempt. Instead, going for the first down, and it's broken up. Marion getting a piece of it in front of Schuler. Wait a minute. Didn't they just kick a 48-yard field goal? 47. 47. And you don't kick a 49-air field goal? You better shake your head. Instead, Patriots take over at their 32-yard line. I don't think they asked. He had his jacket off. Mr. Leahy did. I don't think they asked him. He's not too happy about it. He just made a 47-and-a-half-yard field goal. Why not a 49? It's, it's not raining. That is a uh, curious decision. He just did flick from the 47 yards away. Here's Perryman with the hole. And Perryman running well has 
the first down. 12-yard advance, MacArthur, Ratajkowski, combined on the stop. We're down to four minutes remaining in this first half. Marv Albert, Paul McGuire from Giant Stadium. Where has the rain stopped? Paul, you have better rain vision. Let's see. I put my head out there. Yeah, yeah it stopped. Okay. Remember when? Remember last week when Flutie threw an interception? Offered all the end zone. He didn't throw. He didn't throw another pass for almost a quarter. Not going to do that here. Well, back to the ground. It's Perryman. Picked up about six. Clifton on the stop for Doug Flutie. This is first NFL Meadowlands appearance, but he is no stranger to this stadium. As a one-time member of the New Jersey Generals of the USFL, in fact, he was seven out of seven in the W column with the Generals, and he won his uh, only appearance here with Boston College. But right now, two for 12. These are not stats that he had at BC. Here's Perryman again. Two-long pickup, Clifton, and Lions hey, combined. Man. Tempers flaring. Joe Walton made the point during the week that several Jet players are upset with some of the Patriots who they felt were taunting them uh, during the course of that opening day loss up at uh, Foxborough. We'll get another look at uh, this play. Well, Alex Gordon is coming up filled, and there's Armstrong, number 78, the best offensive lineman of the Patriots. He was in the play, but Armstrong, all he is doing is continuing on with the play. There wasn't anything wrong with that block. He's just staying with his man. This guy's a great line, but lineman. Bruce Armstrong, second season out of Louisville. Third down, three from midfield. Two and a half remaining. But the, the ball actually hits Humphrey in the rear end. And it was Bobby Humphrey who was called, as we mentioned earlier, on that uh, controversial pass interference uh, last week in the game against the Indianapolis Colts. But now we have a discussion. Joe Walton making his point. Here we go. couldn't be cut. Let's just see if the pass can be cut or not. Here's Humphrey. Watch where the ball hits. He's covering Fryer. He's there. I don't understand where the ball can. And the ball could be cut. That's a cop out. So the flag erased. And Bobby Humphrey's very happy. And now the Jets... In punt formation. Townsell awaits the punt from Fiegels. Watch out for the fake to Tutupu. Yes, uh, Tutupu is the lone deep back. But Fiegels punts it. And Townsell with the return. Makes his way close to the 25-yard line. A 33-yard punt. Eight-yard return. Danny Villa making the stop on town cell. Coming up at halftime, Frank DeFord with a tongue-in-cheek look at the uh, curious effect the team's uniform color has on officiating. Now, that's a point you've been pounding at over the years, Paul. That's right. Any team in pink, they're going to throw flags on. Right. Plus, Bob, Ahmad, and Gail will have all the scores and highlights from around the league on NFL Live at halftime. O'Brien throwing on first down has Schuller. Picked up nine. The crowd 
with a disappointing moan because Schuler went out of bounds before the marker. They felt he should have taken a hit and uh, picked up the first down. That's why he has sore ribs. He's yes. been taking hits all year long. They, they, the play was really designed well because they had Vic coming out of the backfield that ran straight down, that held the linebackers, and then Mick Schuler just broke it out to the outside and picked up nine yards on the play. Second and one at the 35 as we approach the two-minute warning. The Jets with a 3-0 lead on the Patriots. O'Brien in trouble as a flag is thrown. And he threw it away. You've got to have a holding penalty. And I don't know. It, it just looked like that Reggie McElroy was holding Andre Tippett, number 56, because that's the way O'Brien started to roll. Now, if that was called, I know he was holding. Now they're going to call it against. Well, we got hands to the face. To the face. I'm going to tell you, McElroy, when I saw the flag, McElroy was sitting there holding on the tippet. And it's Brett Williams uh, called on the penalty. All right, there's Brett Williams, number 96, is there. Now look at Tippett. Look at McElroy. He's got him by the shirt. He's holding him. And O'Brien is trying to get. And there's the, the, the hand to the face. All they had to do was call it. They had a double penalty there, holding on the offensive lineman and hit to the face by the defensive well, line. It's called illegal use of hands by the uh, left defensive end. Williams first down at the 40 now. And O'Brien lofting one, broken up. Schuler taking the shot from Rembert could not hang on. <laughs> You, you don't ever want to see this kind of a pass coming at you because you know you're going to get hit. And it sets up a second down and 10 at the 40-yard line. Look at all the highlights coming up at halftime on NFL Live, hosted by Bob Costas. Jets have a 3-0 lead on the Patriots off the 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy midway through the second quarter. Draw play, and Hector gets out to the 45-yard line, and we have two minutes to go in this first half. We'll be back here at Giants Stadium right after we pause for these messages. All right, now I, I, I made the, the one Friars circle taller because he's taller than Bobby Humphrey. Now here's the play we're talking about, the controversial play. And they said that, that the ball was uncatchable. Take a look at the ball. I think that the thing here is that, that Friar did not really make an honest attempt to come back to the ball because the ball surely was catchable. Patriots have to be upset with that call. Third down and five now for the Jets from their 45 with two minutes left in the half. And it's broken up. Team try to come back for it. Claiborne got a piece of it. Jim Bowman on the coverage of Al Toon, who has had a quiet afternoon. And Andre Tippett got a little piece of O'Brien. Watch this little stunt to the inside. Williams goes to the left. Tippett comes up the middle. The blocking is there, but right at the end, he just a little shoulder shot into O'Brien. Andre Tippett missed four games earlier this season with a groin injury but has come back strong. He has been quiet thus far today. Here's Fryer back awaiting the sixth punt of the first half from Joe Prokop. Prokop at his 30. Line drives it. Fryer misjudged. And it carries in. He apparently did not touch it. Let's see. It's a 55-yard punt. The Jets contending that the ball was touched, and they feel they recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. However, the ruling by the official downfield was that Fryer did not make contact. Now, you can, you can put the fair catch signal up, but you don't have to catch it. Now, here, when, when, when Fryer's there, you're going to take time. The official is standing right there. He had the best view of it. Fryer signaled for the fair catch, but knew he didn't have a chance because the ball's sailing over his head. Now, here's Fryer going back. Signaled for the fair catch. It looked like he wasn't ready because he put his mouthpiece in a little bit late, but here comes the ball down. Now, does the ball go through? People are seeing it on the screen here, and they think he touched it, and it looked the way the blur like it hit his left hand. Look at his left hand. Does the ball hit? No. No, it did not uh, look like it. They're reacting. 
reacting to the replay on uh, the large screen up above Giant Stadium. And uh, the Jets make the recovery just in case. That's uh, Michael Harper who uh, chased it down in the end zone. Fryer appeared to misjudge it. The ball took off on him. Joe Walton obviously does not like the call. Now he's saying he touched the ball. He's seeing the replay here. It's New England's ball. Minute and 40 seconds. Three timeouts left. Let's get on with it. So the Patriots from their 20-yard line, and they did check the instant replay. So it stands as a as a touchback, and we have the advantage of looking at it as you do at home at a closer range. Difficult to uh, tell from uh, the big screen that is up high, <laughs> but it uh, looked to be the correct call. So first down at the 20, and Perryman stopped for a loss on the play. They're not calling a timeout. There's no signal. New England has a timeout. The Jets. And now a timeout is called. We'll be right back. Jets calling that uh, timeout. They'd like to get the ball back, get another shot at it with a minute 28. Remaining in this first half, the Jets three. The Patriots nothing on a 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy. There's head coach Raymond Berry in his fifth full season as head man of the Patriots. He's won six of nine against the Jets. Gonna have Purdy throw the ball, roll him out of there. Get him where he could see the field. They're not gonna run. Stevens again picking up the extra yardage after finding that big hole and he's right at the first down marker let's see where they spot it ball is placed square on the 30 and uh, they do move the chains a first down for New England I don't understand it they got three timeouts 30 yard line is not bad field position I mean to try a couple of things anyway the uh, confidence of the uh, Patriot offense under these conditions. Perryman a stop. Kevin MacArthur, the outside linebacker, on the tackle, down to 40 seconds to go in this first half. Coming up at halftime, all the scores and highlights uh, back at our Manhattan studios. Bob, Ahmad, Gal, and Frank, NFL Live, just ahead. Out of 25 seconds, remaining no. first half. Barb, I really don't understand it. You got a, you've got a, two minutes to play. You have three timeouts, and you've got a pretty good offensive line. Unless they're going to make a quarterback change at halftime, that would take it a knee. I don't understand. I really don't. And the Patriots just run it out. And that is it for the first half. Not exactly action-packed. The Jets 3, New England nothing. And we'll be back here at Giant Stadium in just a few moments. It is halftime at Giant Stadium. The Jets leading the New England Patriots 3-0 on a 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy. That has been it. NFL Live halftime activities will continue in a moment. We'll be right back after these words from your local station. We welcome those of you watching the Patriots-Jets game. Bob Costas along with Ahmad Rashad. Here's what's happening elsewhere. Chicago having its own way at RFK with the Redskins, the team that's eliminated them from the playoffs the last two years. The Bears getting a measure of revenge, leading on the Redskins' home field 20 to nothing, limiting them to four yards rushing in the first half, 49 yards total offense. Mike Ditka is there watching from the sidelines. Vince Tobin continues to coach the 8-2 and two Bears. Cincinnati in front of Kansas City, 14-9. to nine. They took the lead on a five-yard Stanley Wilson run just before halftime. Nick Lowry has three Kansas City field goals. Here's a look at the first TD for the Bengals in the first quarter, the ninth of the year for the rookie out of UNLV, Icky Woods. That puts his fans in a singing mood. So cue it up. You on the left, he can sweep it to the right, and he pulls it to the end zone without all his mind. Oh, Icky. Icky, icky, say. Wow. 
So the <laughs> Ixter delighting fans around the league and the Jets in the game these folks are watching leading on the Pat Leahy field goal of 47 yards, 3 nothing. The sloppy conditions affecting both Flutie and O'Brien. They're each 2 of 13 passing in the first half. Amat? Bob, speaking of icky, this game is an icky game to watch. It's one of the worst games that I've ever seen. All they've been doing is punting back, but there's been 11 punts. It's uh, the only thing driving in the first half has been the rain. It's the sun has popped out here in the, in the close to the halftime, but the play is still the same. It's just uh, you know Paul told me that this game was going to be a tough game because the bio rhythms among the guys on both teams were down. How does he know that? I think he read that somewhere. It's an interesting insight that you won't find just anywhere. The Colts <laughs> are in front of the Packers at Lambeau Field, 13-3. Good first half for Eric Dickerson, 48 yards rushing. Here's the highlight of the first two quarters, however. A Packer fan upset with his team brought a turkey to Lambeau Field to express his displeasure. And here is the gobbler darting toward the sidelines. It delayed the game several minutes. They couldn't catch up with him. Now they've got him boxed in. They don't really tackle him, but they do force him out of bounds and he disappears into the streets of Green Bay, we assume, and a 13-3 lead for the Colts over the Packers. The Steelers lead the Eagles at halftime in Pittsburgh, 16-14. to The Steelers are 2-8, and the Eagles 5-5. Five and five. Three first-half field goals for Gary Anderson of Pittsburgh, including a 52-yarder. The Chargers in front of Atlanta, 3 to nothing. Not an awe-inspiring game in Atlanta. The Falcons are 3-7. and seven. The Chargers are 2-8. and eight. The Chargers have a new starting quarterback. It's Mark Vlasic making his first NFL start. And here's Vlasic in a pickle, sacked by cornerback Scott Case of the Falcons in a play that typified the first half, dominated by defense of Vince Abbott field goal, the only scoring 3 nothing in favor of San Diego. And Tampa Bay at Detroit, tied halftime in the Silver Dome, even up at 10 Four Tampa Bay turnovers in the first half, including two more Vinny Testaverde interceptions. He now has 26, easily the highest figure in the league. And we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. Back at Giant Stadium, the Jets with a 3-0 lead on New England at halftime. Marv Albert, Paul McGuire. And I don't know, Paul, the uh, boys back at the uh, studio, your pals back at NFL Live, just destroying this fine first half that uh, we have uh, witnessed. Uh, Ahmad saying it's one of the worst he's ever seen. I don't know, Ahmad, speaking for Paul and myself, we enjoyed your book. But it was, it was uh, an uneventful uh, first half of play. Yeah, it was. It, it, it's kind of boring, but, but the thing about it is, that you still got a three nothing game and either one of these teams can win this football game but they've got to do something a little bit different we were talking about new england throwing the football they would like to throw it more flutie got in trouble doing that he threw one for an interception that eventually led to the only field goal in the game well it was a first half to give you an idea of the excitement that has taken place here at giant stadium a first half that featured 11 punts and four <laughs> completed passes take a look take a look at this uh, well, the when, jet uh, scenario when you look at it i, I think we pointed out during the game that most important thing about it is the number of plays in each one of those drives, Marvin. When you when you carry the ball uh, three times a punt, three times a punt, three times a punt, four times a punt. I mean, you're just you're just not doing anything with the ball. Granted, there was a lot of rain in that first half, but it, it towards the end of the half, there was no rain. And uh, here's a look at uh, how the Patriots fare in that uh, first half. One turnover though did lead to the the only score that the deflected interception as Carl Howard was able to come up with it. Here is what turned out to be uh, the play of the first half. Well, here is where Flutie was trying to hit Dupard, but he, he should have hit him as he was coming out of the backfield. He waited till he tried to sit up, and then he overthrew the ball. The ball was tipped up in the air. There were two turnovers in that half, and the point that you made, you know, turnovers, they tell the difference of the game, the giveaways and takeaways, but it's what you do with them. And that uh, turnover led to the 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy, as we check out the first half statistics. Passing yardage. And there, there it is. The Patriots turned the ball over twice. One led to the field goal. The only three points in this ballgame. The passing yardage. Again, if you just joined us, it rained like crazy the first quarter and a half. And they could not throw the ball. They didn't have a completed pass in the first quarter. But... Uh, New England, they love to run the football as they wanted to, but I think they're going to have to pass the ball a few more times in order to win this ball game. And the rain has stopped as we get set for the second half kickoff, sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Teddy Garcia, a rookie from northeast Louisiana, kicking it off. And Bobby Humphrey on the return. He 
goes out to the 15. And a penalty marker is down. A 27-yard return by Humphrey. But let's check out the flag. Carl Howard just clipped someone. And that'll bring it back. Number 28. Referee Jerry Mark Bright. Illegal block. Number 28 on the return. First down. And there's Howard, the five-year man from Rutgers. And he has called for that clip. Paul attempting to work the telestrator once well, again. I'm trying to find Howard, and I think this may be him right here. Very good, Paul. If that's him there, now look at you've got to be able to see the guy's name on the back of his shirt. And when you can see the guy's name, but he, he just kind of tripped him up a little bit. Didn't really hit him hard. And it's a first down from the 17. O'Brien intercepted by McGrew. So Lawrence McGrew with the interception of Ken O'Brien. For McGrew, his first intercept of the season. There he is in his eighth year at of University of Southern California. Man has moved from inside linebacker to uh, the outside position. And that is only the seventh time that O'Brien has been picked off this season. McGrew is just sitting back watching the eyes of O'Brien. They're just trying to a little dump pass to Wesley Walker, or someone they haven't been throwing the ball to for the last three or four games. And McGrew just stepped in and took the ball. They were sitting into a zone. O'Brien didn't see him. And the Patriots take over first down inside the 20-yard line. And Flutie throwing for the end zone for Stanley Morgan. Beautifully executed. So the Jet turnover leading to the Patriots score. Stanley Morgan today has been a popular target of Doug Flutie. He had not been a man prominent in the uh, Patriot game plan the last couple of weeks. Did I say or did I not say that they're going to have to throw the ball? Touchdown. First play from scrimmage. After a turnover, a great place to, to do it. And Flutie had Stanley Morgan wide open. I don't know whether Humphrey and uh, Alex Gordon ran into each other. We'll have to take a look. And the point after by Jason Storoski has given the Patriots a 7-3 lead. We'll be back in a moment. This game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Coors Light, there's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. And by Braun Electric Shavers. It is through superior design that superior performance can be achieved. Many empty seats. People are scared away by the bad weather. The rain has stopped here at Giant Stadium, and the Patriots have taken a 7-3 lead. Bobby Humphrey to the 10 and hit down as he approached the 20 yard line 15 yard return of the Jets back to the offense uh, just a moment ago O'Brien intercepted by McGrew and on the very first play Flutie connected with Morgan for a 19 yard touchdown pass so Flutie with that one toss matched his passing yardage of the first half Stanley Morgan just takes Humphrey and turns him inside out he's open this is what happens to a defense when an offensive football team basically lives and dies by the run. You come out and throw a pass when you want to, not when you have to. Fourth touchdown of the season for Morgan. Good hole for Vic. Seven-yard advance. Rebert and Marion combined on the stop. Roger Vick, second-year man from Texas A&M, setting up a second and three from the 28-yard line as we uh, go around the 10-minute uh, ticker. And here's Rick again, has the first down. McGrew on the stop, so Rick running well. That time picked up nine. Got an excellent block by Dan Alexander, number 60. Coming right there, you see Alexander blocking out. And when you block, he's blocking out of Brent Williams. Once that happens, that hole is there. The linebackers don't fill. It's first down. Good block. He's hurt. And Alexander uh, back up. Did 
not play in the first half, playing with a torn calf muscle. 85 Walker in motion. And again, Vic. About five on the play. Ronnie LePet made the stop. The rookie, Mike Withacombe, started at right guard. And Alexander now has come on at that position. He and Haight at the guards. McElroy and Chriswell at the tackles. The Jet offensive line has been a shambles. Uh, the latest to get hurt, Guy Bingham. He had taken over at right guard the uh, past couple of weeks for Alexander. He's out four to six weeks with a sprained knee. Bingham also the long snapper. Gets running well now as Hector has the first down. James with the start. Marv, what the Jets are doing on that last play, they had two tight ends in the ball game. They had Briggs and Schuler in the in the game. Only one running back, and that was Johnny Hector. They spread out the defense, and the first four plays that they've run in this series have all been up the middle. They found a hole, they're going to work on it. If it's if it if it's working for you, you just stay with it. And the Jets first down at the New England 47-yard line. Walker to the left at the bottom of your screen. Now in motion. Two up top. Again to the ground. Again the hole. This time it's Neal. Across the 35. A 13-yard run. Roland James on the stop. Is it a coincidence that since... The entrance of Dan Alexander at right guard. The Jets have run so well. You would you would think it would be. And the other thing is that five straight plays that they've run now have been up the middle between the guards and the center. Just take a look at Sweeney, Alexander. There's cross blocking there. Sweeney gets an excellent block. They they cross block, which moves the nose tackle out, and the hole is there. The middle linebackers are not filling. They've got 46 yards in five plays. keep running that play. There's Alexander. He's got a torn calf muscle. Watch this. He's moving out there, double teaming on the nose man, but then he sees the blitzing linebacker coming in, which is Reynolds, number 95, so he just slips off and takes him. Second out and two. Dan Alexander, very gutsy player, playing with a torn calf muscle, was not expected to be in action today. And McNeil has the first down. Freeman McNeil going to the other side on a slant. Picks it up. McGrew made the stop. Alexander finally missed a game last week. Did not play against the Colts after playing at 172 straight games. And here he is back in the lineup, a 12-year pro out of LSU. Pulled muscle is one thing, but when you tear a muscle, you can imagine the pain that this man is in, and he's in there playing and doing a great job. First down at the 21. Patriots 7 gets 3. Five minutes gone by. Third quarter. Schuler peels off. And it's Vick looking to go wide and then cuts back in and fumbles. Recovered by the Patriots, Johnny Lambert. They had so much success, Marv. Six straight plays in a row. You're running up the middle. Now they try to run wide. It was it was blocked off, just no place to go. And then all of a sudden, Vic decides to cut it back in, and he's got the ball in his right arm. Now, when he cuts back, that's where the ball comes out. It's hit right there, pops into the air. Rembert gets it. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Doug Flutie enjoying the moment as the uh, Jets and the Patriots had a game within the game as Stanley Morgan came out of the field and uh, then Robin Cole and James Hasty were about to depart. Look at uh, Johnny Rembert, who just recovered that, that fumble, getting some assistance uh, on the uh, on the sideline. So the situational substitution affected by uh, how the Patriots line up. Well, Mark Bright's going over talking to Joe Walton. What happened is that, that Stanley Morgan kept going, standing on a 20, faked like he was going to go off the field. Now, the Jets want to be in a different defense when he's off the field as opposed to when he's on. So the Jets actually had 13 guys standing on the field waiting to see what's going to happen. It appears 
Uh, they have settled the matter. What a frustrating moment for the Jets. They go eight plays, 60 yards, successfully doing it on the ground, and then Vic coughs it up, and the Patriots take over at their 15-yard line. First down at the 15. Patriots seven, and the Jets three. Five minutes, 10 seconds gone by in the third quarter. That's Fryer in motion, followed by Humphrey across the field. And here's Stevens who has not been able to unleash. Only a yard on the play, so Stevens with 14 carries, 56 yards. He has gone over 100 the last three games. The last Patriot to do that, Don Calhoun, back in the 1976 season. In fact, he did it four straight games, and that is what Stevens, the second top rusher in the AFC, is gunning for. Second down and nine the 16. Stevens and Perryman are the running backs. Stevens, rather uh, Perryman, tried the left side and was stopped by Benson. Rich Viano got in there. Troy Benson was the guy that filled the gap. He made the hit but didn't hold on but enabled the rest of the defense to get it. Now you're going to see Perryman coming in. 54 is Troy Benson. Bang, there's the hit there. Now, he doesn't really make the tackle, the solid stop, but on the bottom, Mercero is there to make the play. So it's a third down and seven from the 18-yard line. And we'll take a break. Back after these words. exciting a day has it been here at Giant Stadium. The fans just reacted with a standing ovation with the sun coming through. <laughs> a 7-3 Patriot lead over the Jets. Six minutes in, third quarter. And a third down and seven for New England. And it's 18-yard line. Now the crowd urging the Jet defensive unit on. the first down by the left outside linebacker Alex Gordon. Jets sitting in that defense were expecting run. The last time that they were in that formation, they threw the ball to Dupart. It was intercepted, but he couldn't get it to him. This time it's just a straight handoff to Perriman. Robert Perriman in there, and here comes Gordon, 55. Nobody blocked him, and I think that was Dupart's man. And for the sixth time, Jeff Fiegels has come on to punt. The Patriot team record most punts in one game, 11. And the Jets also with 11. And we may be approaching that figure. There's Townsell at midfield. Gets inside the 45. 32-yard punt. And an 8-yard return by Jojo Townsell. Steve Johnson, the backup tight end, making the stop. And the Jets back to the offense. Uh, their last series, very successful, but it was stopped by the uh, fumble by Roger Vick. They ran six straight plays up the middle or between the guards. And then all of a sudden they went wide. As soon as they went wide, Vick fumbled the football. Got hit, there was nothing out there. I go right back and attack the middle. Go until they stop it. It is Alexander and Hayden at the guards. Steady the center, Chris Well. And McElroy on the tackles, and again the big hole for Hector. Jets continue to run well. Seven-yard pickup for Johnny Hector. Andre Tippett made the stop. Hector has gone for 55 yards on nine. Line, Hayton, and Chriswell, they're just getting some block. There's Andre Tippett coming down the line. Actually gets an arm in there, but the blocking is there. They're just taking a nose tackle down the field. Second down three. O'Brien with lots of time. And he has McNeil for the first down and more. Put a move on Marion, but slip. 16 yards on the pass play. O'Brien just sat there and he waited, he waited. He had some time to find and, and was not his primary target. Freeman McNeil was not. But also, Vicky Schuler gets a good block downfield after the catch. But O'Brien had time to find... McNeil just slip out of the backfield. Now here comes Mickey Schuler on McGrew, number 50. Really didn't have to block him, but just screen him. That move that McNeil makes to the inside on Marion, but slipped and fell in the, in the wet stuff. First down at the 20. 
Walker in motion. Here's Vick. Off right guard for the short pickup. Roger Vick coming in averaging four yards per carry. And has shown some signs. Comes off a disappointing uh, rookie year, although he says his progress last season was slowed by the strike, but running well this afternoon. Second down and seven, down at the 17. Altunas to the left side. Altoon has been silent. O'Brien checking Altoon, but then going the other way for Walker. Could not hold on. LaPette was beaten by Walker. There's no question about it. Wesley Walker, I mean, he was there. He had his hands out and his hands touched the ball. Should have caught the football. They had three people actually in the pattern that time. Toon was one. Freeman McNeil was the other one. And then this man, Wesley Walker, look where the ball is thrown. To the outside, hits him right in the hands. He just dropped the football. LaPette was beaten. Third down and seven. From the 17, O'Brien is now 3 for 16, only 42 yards, one interception. And this time, O'Brien hold down. Andre Tippett producing a 15-yard loss for Tippett, his fifth sack of the season. Tippett's on Chriswell, and when Tippett comes up, Chriswell is taking it to the outside. But watch where O'Brien spins. Instead of stepping up into the pocket, he steps back away from the block of Chriswell, where he has no chance of staying with Tippett. Ending sack. And Pat Leahy has come on. Pat Ryan will hold earlier, hit from 47 yards out. This one is from 48 yards away. Earlier, Joe Walton did not go for a 49-yard attempt. And this one just did get across the crossbar. In fact, it deflected home. So the Patriots now lead 7-6. In his 15th year out of the University of St. Louis, Pat Leahy just put one through and just did get it over from 48 yards away. The return by Sammy Martin. Trying to get to the outside. He reaches out to the 30-yard line. A 20-yard run on the kickoff return by Martin. Stopped by K.D. Dunn. Now let's go back to that field goal. Look at Ryan. He has to almost come off the ground. Good set, good hold by the offensive line, keeping him out. And then Leahy's kick. Here it comes right at you. That thing would have been good from 48 and a half. <laughs> you know that? So Leahy hitting on his second, both from long range from 47 and from 48. First down for Flutie of the Patriots on the run. And all that running produced about a two-yard pickup. A look at the scoreboard. The Bears now lead the Redskins 20-7 to in the third. Cincinnati by 21-16 over Kansas City. The Bengals trying to go to 9-2. Indianapolis opening up. Chris Chandler has thrown two. Pittsburgh taking the lead on Philadelphia 23-17. Tampa Bay and Detroit tied at 10. Second down seven. They called a three-yard pickup for Flutie. Patriots from their 33. And Flutie throwing for Morgan. Morgan Cummer by Humphrey. Flutie's been on target with the ball. On, you know, he's thrown a couple of bad passes, but the ones down the sideline, he seems to have the timing down pretty well. I did, don't know if Morgan would have been in bounds or not on this play. Take a look at when he comes down. He goes up in the air here, and yeah, he'd have stayed in bounds. It looked like he might have been out of bounds, but he was stayed in bounds. The ball hit him right in the hands. Floating out three for 15, only 38 yards. 19 of the 38 coming on the touchdown completion to Morgan. Now Dupont in the backfield for this third down seven from the 33. And it is intercepted by the rookie. 
Pete James Hasty, a pass intended for Cedric Jones. Two things that Flutie did wrong. One, he looked at Cedric Jones the whole time. And the other thing, instead of throwing the ball in there, he tried to guide the ball in. And Hasty was right there to pick it up. Watch Flutie. He's just his looking to the left, looking to the left at one target. And it gives Hasty a time, time to come up on the ball. And then the ball is thrown short. No chance for the receiver to get to it, but a chance for the defender to get there. And Hasty just makes a nice play on the ball, intercepted. First down at the 45 as the Jets take over. And O'Brien able to complete to two his first catch. And that runs for the first down. Play. Now going into last week, Flutie had not been intercepted in three games, picked off once last week by the Dolphins, and twice today, Al Toon, who as you saw, came off the 13-catch uh, day against the Colts last week, career high, however, he averaged only eight yards per reception. And isn't Eason healthy? Yes, he is. You anticipating a, uh, a change? McNeil across the 30-yard uh, line, stopped by the nose tackle of Toby Williams. Tony Eason has been out with a dislocated shoulder and a hand injury. Activated three weeks ago, has not played since last November when he separated his shoulder against the Los Angeles Raiders. The Jets facing Steve Grogan, the uh, Jet killer. On opening day in Foxborough, Grogan did the job again. He is dressed, but would only be available in a drastic situation. He is uh, suffering with an injured neck. So Eason is considered the number two quarterback. Second down, six. Hector dancing his way. Picked up three on the play. Set for an update. Let's go to Gail Gardner at NFL Live. All right, Marvin Arrowhead, the Chiefs had cut the Bengals' lead to 21-16. The ensuing kickoff comes to Cincinnati Stanford Jen Jennings. The big hole up the middle. He's being chased by Nick Lowry and J.C. Pearson, but they're not going to catch him. 98-yard kickoff return, 28-16. Back to the Meadowlands. Thank you, Gail. Third down, four. The Jets of the Patriot, 27-yard line. Three and a half remaining in this third quarter. Completes for the first down, and then the ball was not loose. Altoon made the catch, could not hold on, and coughed it up. Marion with the hit, Rembert with the recovery. If that thing stays up, that'll be Rembert's second fumble recovery. He was, what, the AFC Defensive Player of the Week last week. Marion made a great hit, but the question is, did Toon have possession of the ball? Now we'll take another look. Joe didn't think so. It's amazing how the coach said he have caught the ball. It was a catch. You know, now it's a fumble. Not one to catch. All right, here is a look at it, and we check it out in regular speed to try and determine whether Toon did have a possession. If he did, if he made the catch, then it is a fumble recovered by Rembert. If the ruling is that uh, he did not have possession, it would go incomplete pass, and uh, the Jets maintained possession, would have a fourth down coming up. I really don't think he had possession of the ball because as soon as he touched the ball, look at Joe's going up in the air. As soon as he touches the ball, he's going to get hit. And they're checking it out on the instant replay. This is the uh, slow motion uh, look at the attempt by Toon. See, it just doesn't look like he has possession of the ball at that point. But Toon thinks so because he goes after it. All right, here's Toon from the, the, the end zone. Although that's a smart play because so many players do stop. And... Uh, just in case you we go after Russ the ball. Francis yes. stop, and they pick up the ball and ran with it. I, I don't think he had possession. On the other hand, some players feel, well, if I don't go after it, it might give the official the uh, the thought that uh, it uh, yeah, but wasn't. They don't care what you think. That's true also. <laughs> That's why they have A those good flags point, in there and those whistles. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Rembert did recover one earlier. We uh, showed you in our flashback that he came up with that uh, big fumble recovery in the wild a couple of years back. The play stands. First down. Thank you. Well, the play does well, stand. Well, well. Did not appear to be a completion when we checked out the uh, 
the regular speed replay. So the Patriots take over on the fumble recovery by Johnny Rembert. First down at the 28. third quarter and Stevens for the short pickup also a flag tossed Scott Mercero made the stop and the penalty being called on New England there's been one call that I've really liked New England has made in this Holding second half number 78 offense and that's touchdown. on Armstrong was the touchdown pass of Flutie's. I mean, on first down after the turnover, they went right up into the air with the ball. Now, they get the ball back on another turnover and going to the guy that everybody in the place knows is going to carry the ball, and that's Stevens. And now New England is first and 20 back at the 18. It's a 7-6 Patriot lead. to Stevens and the tight end Russ Francis with his first catch of the day Alex Gordon on the stop a 14 yard pickup it'll be a second down and six the linebacker I think it was MacArthur number 57 to the left of the screen really plays it well his, his job is contained now see what he does he gets out on Flutie's face and forces him to check up and throw the ball fortunately for Flutie Russ Francis was wide open Gordon makes the tackle, but they got back, what, 16 out of that 20. 2.25 remaining in this third quarter. And here's Stevens. Stopped by a host of Jets, led by Alex Gordon. John Stevens, the Patriots' number one draft pick out of Northwestern State in Louisiana. Here's Alex Gordon. He's on the tight end, Russ Francis. But I don't think Francis was blocking him. Via number 77 coming down the line was supposed to take Gordon, the linebacker. Never got there in time. Gordon played it beautifully, and along with Marty Lyons, no gain. Third down and four. Patriots at their 34. to the sideline. Incomplete. Cedric Jones not able to hold on. He was covered by James Hasty. He likes to throw to Jones when he's in there, doesn't he? They're good friends. One turned into an interception. This one turned into a drop ball. And now Fiegels will come on for the seventh time today. JoJo Townsell dropping back to his 25-yard line. Patriots with a record of 5-5. Five and five. They are 4-2 and two in the division. Comes down to a tiebreaker and making the wild card. First it would be head-to-head -head and then games in the division. While the Jets are 5-4-1. and one. So this is a pivotal game in terms of the playoff hopes for both teams. Short punt. And Townsell let it go. There is a flag thrown. And with the roll, it's a 43-yard punt. Minute 22 remaining in this third quarter. Patriots indicating that the penalty will be called against the Jets. They've got a holding, but that's holding after it's kicked. Number 28, while the kick was in the air, penalty from the possession spot. Down. Howard's not having a good day, is no. he? <laughs> he had a clip earlier. Uh, did come up with an interception, but that's the second time that he has been hit with a, a penalty call. Around the scoreboard, Bears 20-7 over Washington. Cincinnati now with that 28-16 uh, lead. You saw the 98-yard kickoff return by Stanford Jennings. Pittsburgh leading Philadelphia. San Diego over Atlanta in a thriller. to the 17-yard line. Fred Murray of the free safety making the stop. Jets last week lost at Indianapolis. Colts with 21 unanswered points in the third quarter to break it open. The Jets had won their previous two 
beating Miami in a shootout, knocking off the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, the Jets are having the difficulties again today in the uh, second half. They've also turned it over three times in this third quarter. And he has had himself a good day as the first down. Lawrence McGrew is upset because Mickey Schuler was held onto his arm. He couldn't get out to the outside to stop the play. Mark, is O'Brien throwing a ball? I know he hasn't completed one, but is he, is he throwing a ball over 30 yards? In, I don't think so in this game. No. And we talked about it at the beginning, all the short passes he's throwing. And they are having success running the football. His longest completion, 17 yards. Final seconds, third quarter. McNeil out to the 30. And that is it for the third quarter. The Patriots lead the Jets by the score of 7-6. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Well, Paul, you posed the question uh, moments ago concerning uh, Ken O'Brien. His longest completion, 17 yards. You asked had he uh, thrown a ball over a 30, and uh, the answer attempted at least uh, two times. Right, and I, I really don't remember when he did it. Off the uh, second down and five, Hector hit down short of the first down as we get started here in the fourth quarter. Marv Albert, Paul McGuire. Patriots lead the Jets by the score of 7-6. to six. The rain has stopped. Tremendous downpour throughout the first quarter, and uh, that has certainly affected uh, the passing game, neither uh, Flutie or O'Brien with the uh, statistics that uh, they are proud of. So look at the rushing. The, the Patriots are, are, are running the ball pretty well with Stevens and also with Perriman, but the Jets... They, they're going up the middle whenever they want to. Third down and two. O'Brien could not find anybody and just threw it away. Intended for Hopper. Marion on the coverage. And again, the Jets will be forced to punt. There was just some excellent coverage in the secondary, and O'Brien really had no place to go with the ball except to throw it away. Brent Williams was to him, but it was a little bit late. Hey, you got to give the credit to the secondary. And that is an excellent uh, secondary. Lepet, Claiborne in the corners. James and Marion are the uh, safety men. Here's Fryer back at his 25. Awaiting punt number seven from Joe Prokop. Fryer out to the 40-yard line. Up at the 42, 36-yard punt. He ran it back for 10, stopped by Marion Bobber. Well, we took a close-up look at Ken O'Brien, now a dissection of Doug Flutie. He's big from 10 to 19. Completed 3 out of 10. Not good numbers. And Irving Fryer shaken up. Irving Fryer had been a favorite target of Doug Flutie, who of course has not uh, thrown the ball frequently, only 14 times last week against Miami, completing 7-6 for 18 of that win over the Bears two weeks ago. Fryer did catch a touchdown pass uh, last week. Let's see if we can check out how this occurred. Here comes Fryer now. He's going to make a move to, the, to his right, to the left of the screen. I don't see anything at this point. And then it looks like it is it the ankle that just gave way underneath his left ankle. Irving Fryer, who earlier in the season was bothered by a sprained left wrist at a big game opening day in Foxborough against the Jets. He caught two touchdown passes from Steve Grogan in his fifth season out of Nebraska. They are checking him out. Minute gone by in the fourth quarter. And the Patriots lead the Jets by the score of 7-6. We'll be right back.
game is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Pontiac, we build excitement. And by Apple Computer, giving you the power to be your best in home, school, and business. We welcome you back to Giant Stadium in the New Jersey Meadowlands. Irving Fryer helped to the sideline, and we'll pass on a report as uh, soon as it comes across. Patriots take over, first down from their 42-yard line. Now they go with the backfield of Marvin Allen, the rookie from Tulane, and Robert Perryman. This is Allen. Allen putting the speed on. Stopped by the combination of Troy Benson and George Ratajkowski. Ratajkowski starting today at the free safety position for the injured Eric McMillan, who was out with a bruised ankle. Allen picked up six, and it's a second down and four. Well, Cincinnati now up 28-19. Lowry hitting from 47 yards out for Kansas City. Tampa Bay in front of Detroit, 17-13. Fryer trying to uh, try to walk it off. Now Stevens back out of the eye. Stevens and Perryman in the backfield for the second down four. It is Perryman right at the first down marker. And Lyons from his right defensive end position made the stop. And uh, they'll check it out and see if the Patriots did pick up. They have a first, first down. down. It is. By the nose of the ball. Watch and, this. Uh, great eyes. Yes, this from the man who uh, has now shown his credibility with that call. Very nice, That's Paul. Right. Well, the report on Irving Fryer is that he will return. They're telling us from the Patriot sideline that he banged up his right knee. That was the precise terminology. Side linebacker Kevin MacArthur. Guy on that last play, you got to give some credit to is James Hasty, number 40, is the corner, and he was sitting there and he knew that number one, he was going to get hit by Perryman. The other thing he knew that the two guys that were tackling were also going to fall on him. Number 40 is Hasty, and here they come. Look at Hasty sitting there. He's got to wait for the blow and then they bury him. Hasty, the rookie from Washington State, one of the Jets' two picks on the third round, and he's played well, both he and and done the job. Second down and eight at the 46. Patriots seven, but Jets six. Off the draw, Stevens. Mercero on the stop. On that last play, it, it's, it looks like a pass play. Flutie goes back, and it's, it's actually a draw to Stevens. Flutie goes back. The offensive line will sit up just for a second, and then they just cave everything back to the inside. Perryman, number 34, gets a terrific block downfield on Troy Benson, and that opened a hole. They picked up eight on the play. And it's a third down and two for New England. Stevens now 62 yards. 16 carries. Mosi Tarkupu now in the backfield, lined up to the right, along with John Stevens. And it's Stevens with his best one of the day. A burst by John Stevens going for 21. This is an excellent call. Because you're not going wide with the play. You've got, you've got short yardage. You only have two yards to go. The best place to go is straight up the field. Now watch where the blocking in the offensive line is there. And here comes Stevens. There's the hole that's opened up. The linebackers are committed up close. The next guy that gets to him is Hasty. Miano, he overruns the play. Rich Miano, number 36. Take a look. He's coming down the line. He's cutting it short. Instead of going, taking some depth, he doesn't do that. Hasty has to make the touchdown saving tackle. And Irving Fryer is back, lined up in a slot right. First down from the 19. There's Tatupu. Penalty flag is down. 13-yard advance, and the Patriots run.
running well. Hasty made the stop. The interesting part about both of these teams is they've been able to run in the middle of each each other's defensive line. Number 66, offense, first down. The hold is called on Paul Fairchild. And he knows it. Fairchild coming on for Sean Farrell, as he did. Uh, upon occasion uh, last week, Farrell suffering from the flu last week. Now Farrell is back in. Fairchild now lining up a right guard. And Ron Wooten had a couple of uh, calls against him earlier. He's on the sideline. Here is Tartupu. So on the first and 20, a short pickup for Mosi Tartupu. Scott Mercero made the stop, setting the New England offensive line. It is Via and Armstrong at the tackles, and Farrell and Fairchild at the guards. The center is Babb. Patriots with a 7-6 lead, nine and a half left in the fourth quarter. They brought in their passing team now. They've they put in the Reggie Dupart and Robert Perriman in the backfield. He picked one off earlier, but let's see what this flag is all about. Pass intended for Stanley Morgan. Significant call right here. Patriots seem to believe it is against the Jets. This happened well before the play as Stanley Morgan was coming off the line of scrimmage is when Hasty actually grabbed him because it wasn't in the end zone. That, that was an excellent play on the ball. And that is the sixth penalty against the Jets. down at the 23. It's a 10-yard penalty. And, and first of all, the Jets would have had the ball. The worst part about it, it ends up in a first down. Patriots on the move off the running of Stevens and Tatupu. And here's Stevens. John Stevens now John running well. Stevens. He'd been held in check earlier. Kyle Clifton made the stop. Reeling off seven on the play. It will be a second down and a long three. 90 yards, 18 carries. And that man, Bud Carson, the Jets defensive coordinator now, uh, looking to put a put a stop to the rookie running back, John Stevens. And he's done a great job with this football team this year, Marvin. I mean, they've had they've got a lot of young players, a lot of injuries. Gaston leaves the team. He's still tied going into this game for the lead uh, with seven sacks, and he hadn't played in, what, four or five games. And here's Stevens again, this time bottled up. And a flag throw. Gerald Nichols leading that uh, jet charge. Nichols, the nose tackle in his second season out of Florida State. The game was boring before. Number 68. Now it's getting sloppy. <laughs> and there's the setter, Mike Babb, called for the penalty. Babb acquired just before the start of the season from the Cleveland Browns. 68 is Babb, and he's got his arm around him, and they see that right off the bat. That's Nichols, who he was holding. As soon as that arm goes around, you can keep it out in front, but once it gets behind, and it was wide open, the official was right on target. Sets it back to a second and 14. New England 
Allen at the Jet, 27. Patriots, 7. Jet, 6. 7.45, left fourth quarter. Flutie taking the look and has Dupont. But short of the first down. About six on the play. Clifton made the tackle. And it will be a third down and eight. Swing around the 10-minute ticker. Score that Patriots and Jets are focused in on is Indianapolis in front of Green Bay. Indianapolis looking to go to six and five. They have been hot after the bad start. Well, Green Bay at least scored after the last two games. They were shut out. Philadelphia now by one over Pittsburgh, 24-23. Tampa Bay leads Detroit, 17-13. Third down eight. Patriots at the Jets, 21. Flutie off the roll and able to complete the Perryman. Perryman will set it up as first and goal. 18-yard pass play. Alex Gordon made the tackle on the fullback, Robert Perryman. What happens is Flutie rolls out, Marvin. When he does, Rich Miano comes up to force Flutie, and nobody takes Perryman. Now, if the linebacker Gordon got stuck inside, I don't know. But you see, Perryman here is wide open. There's nobody on him. Miano goes up the field, and Troy Benson, number 54, was banging his head. And that was probably his man. It will be a first and goal down at the three. So with that completion, Flutie is now 6 for 20, 78 yards. And here's Stevens getting the blocking and looks to power his way in. And it is a touchdown. John Stevens with his third touchdown of the season. And the Patriots now lead it 13 to 6. He just ran over Carl Howard. Carl Howard, number 28, was standing on the goal line waiting to take on the blow, and he did, and Stevens delivered it. John Stevens, an offensive lineman, his first three years in high school, also an excellent blocker. He has a combination of speed and power, and has come on strong in the second half. Skorowski adding to the lead. The Patriots, 14, the Jets, 6. 6.48 left, fourth quarter. Big lineup tonight here on NBC, and it gets underway. Uh, Paul with Mickey's 60th, 6-0 birthday special. He didn't look a day over 50. He didn't look a day over one when I first saw him. Which that was, let's see, he was 10 when I saw him. So. Uh -huh. Patriots 10 plays 58 yards, consuming 7 minutes and 13 seconds. And the return here by Bobby Humphrey. He went 17 yards on the kickoff return. Tim Jordan making the stop. Perryman, number 34, gets a block on Zordich right there. And that enables Stevens to get to the outside and bring on the confrontation with Howard. Now, Howard... You got to get your face up and don't turn your back because when you turn your back, this is what happens. You end up with a sore back and a forearm stuck in it. Jets start out from their 20-yard line. Play action. And O'Brien after the uh, pump. Penalty marker down. Pass intended for Al Toon. Covered by Raymond Claiborne. Had to be a better selection to throw the ball to that time. Illegal contact foul, number 32, defense, automatic first down. It is called on the left corner, Ronnie LaPette. Legal contact foul. This happens to be a contact sport. Now Paul fooling with the terminology. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's got to be a well, better way to explain that one, I think. Can be illegal contact. Even in a contact sport. First out of the 25, two in motion. Six and a half to go, fourth quarter. Now O'Brien has Schuler. So O'Brien went across the field, and Schuler refusing to go down. He 
was covered by LePet and Marion. It's a 20-yard pass play. And O'Brien has not thrown a better ball all day long. Mickey Schuler gets out and, and just kind of breaks off downfield. You see LePet number 42 is staying with him. And when he looks out, look where the ball goes. LePet breaks it off short. And this ball is just perfect. Hits him right in the numbers. And instead of going out of bounds, Schuler's just trying to get more yardage out of it. Peck trying to strip Schuler. First out of the 46-yard line. Again, the time, the dump off for two. And he had nowhere to go. Ernest Gibson right there. This of little consolation, but Altoon has now caught three or more passes in all of his 45 NFL starts. He came into today's play as second in pass receiving in the NFL behind Eric Martin of New Orleans. 55 catches coming in for Toon, 56 for Martin, but uh, Toon averaging only 10 yards per reception on the season. Second down, 13. Intended for Johnny Hector, covered by Ronnie Lopet. Well, Ernest Gibson was was coming downfield, and they put they're going with six defensive backs because what they want to do is have a guy like Gibson take a back coming out of the backfield instead of a linebacker fooling with it, and they can run with it better. But that time, you know, Hector was open; the ball was just overthrown. And we're down to five minutes remaining. Fourth quarter, the significance of this game, the Patriots and the Jets with wild card playoff aspirations. And going into today, within their division, the Jets are only one and three. The Patriots, three and two. Look out, and O'Brien goes down. The left defensive end, Brent Williams, with his fifth sack of the season. We talk about this all through the game, but you've got to give credit to the secondary, and you touched on it before. This is an excellent defensive secondary. And when you see O'Brien from the backside here, there's just no place to throw the football. He cannot find anyone open. This was the play before when he threw the ball to Hector going downfield. But on that last play, he had no place to throw the ball. And the Patriots with their third sack of the day. Punt number seven by Brokop. Fire let it go. Goes as a 47-yard punt, and the Patriots will go back to the offense inside their 15-yard line. Crowd of 48,358 here at the New Jersey Meadowlands, so the no-shows in the area of 30,000. Rain falling earlier in the ball game. In fact. A uh, enormous downpour during the first quarter. The rain has stopped. The Patriots lead the Jets 14 to 6 as we resume first down for New England from the 14-yard line. Four and a half minutes left. Fourth quarter. Perryman with a pickup of one stopped by the left defensive end, Paul Fraze. Now Chicago with a 27-7 lead on Washington. Cincinnati leading Kansas City 28. 21, Indianapolis with the 20 to 6 lead on Green Bay. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia with uh, lots of action throughout the afternoon. And Tampa Bay and Detroit now tied at 20. Starting to score down there in Atlanta now, too. It'll be a second and nine at the 15 yard line. The uh, Patriots with Mike Babb at center, and they're going now with Sean Farrell and Paul Fairchild at guard. We mentioned Ron Wooten going to the sideline, and we have received word he has been suffering from the flu, so uh, was taken out. He was hit with a couple of uh, penalty calls earlier, but Fairchild is in at right guard. Bruce Armstrong, Danny Villa in at the uh, tackles. Coming up next on most of these NBC stations, stay tuned for the second half of our football doubleheader. Most of you will see the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos. Check your local listings for the game in your area.
Doug Flutie, originally drafted by the Los Angeles Rams, signed with the generals of the USFL, then on to the Chicago Bears and New England. And since he has taken over, the Patriots have gone four and two under Flutie. Took over, came off the bench uh, back in early October against Green Bay. Will Stevens, he had nowhere to go. He tried to go outside, could not make the turn. Alex Gordon, the first to reach him, and Don Stevens lost four. When you talk about Flutie's numbers, Marv, they're not great numbers. They're not good numbers, as a matter of fact. But the whole secret to it is winning, and they can win doing what they're doing, running with the football, pass when you have to, when, when you want to pass, and playing excellent defense. Timeout has been taken. It'll be a third down and 13. Back at the 11. The Jets have one timeout left. And the Patriots with three. And there is the stat line on Doug Flutie. Six for 20, 78 yards. Again, the Patriots doing it on the ground. John Stevens, after a slow start, at least for Stevens, now with 88 yards, 20 carries. Perryman has run for 40 on uh, 13 carries. And against the Chicago Bears, he was 6 out of 18, but 4 of those 6 happened to, happen to be touchdowns. That's 3 of his first 4 completed passes were for touchdowns. You see time remaining, 4.07 left in this fourth quarter. It's a third down, 13. Stevens with a flag throw. Stevens out to the 15-yard line. A short pickup. Kyle Clifton there to make the stop. Clifton, the Jets' leading tackler. Get offsides against the Jets. And the offside is against the Jets. Offside, number 90, defense. Called on Robin Cole, the outside uh, linebacker. Well, to really get a, a, a look at uh, what is happening in football, our crack staff uh, going to uh, all possibilities has come up with this uh, particular statistic. And if all holds true to form, the Patriots will win here today. In presidential election years, the New England Patriots have won both games of the series against the Jets. How's that for intelligent research? Had the better known that today. Third down and eight. Perryman off the right side. A stop by Lions. And the Jets take their third time out, but they will have one more. That's a two-minute warning. Not a happy man. And we discussed earlier the fact that November and December have not been pleasant months for Joe Walton. His career record, November 11 and 13, December 4 and 12. And uh, the Jets beaten last week by uh, Indianapolis. How do you explain the Jets in recent years collapsing in the second half? There have been injuries, of course, but this has been consistent. I think it's one, one of the big things. You know, three years ago when they were 10 and 1 and they lost the last five, Marv, they lost, what, their three all-pro people. Gastineau, Mel, and uh, one other person was on the, on the defense, Marty Lyons, I think, no, or Plecko, Plecko. And they, you know, injuries have really hurt this team through the latter part of the year. You feel it's the injuries that have cost them down the split? I think so. Eagles just did get it away. Only a 22-yard punt. Eagles facing the big rush, and the Jets take over with 3.23 remaining fourth quarter. This is the story going into today's play. Uh, Buffalo well in front. The rest of the race is for the uh, wild card, and they're really looking at the uh, central division. The Jets at 5-4-1, and one, New England at 5-5, uh, five and five. Indianapolis in front of their game. Miami plays tomorrow. So, uh, for both the Jets and New England, a uh, critical ball game. We mentioned the division breakdown. It could come down to that in a tiebreaker. O'Brien able to hit uh, Schuler. Mickey Schuler has become a prominent target here today. Brent Williams 
Now the stop. Jets in a hurry up. And that's what, one of the guys that, that, that Brian really, he doesn't want to throw the ball to the tight ends in this particular situation because he's usually going to hit him in the middle of the field. Here's where you want to go, now right there. for Walker, but off the mark. That does stop the clock. Wesley Walker covered by Roland James. And Ken O'Brien hearing it from the crowd. He now has a third down and two. The Jets would like to get a quick seven. They have used all their timeouts except for the uh, the two-minute warning. And that would put them within one point. So they need two scores trailing by the count of 14-6. Now here's a situation where you're at third and two, third and three. You're almost forced to throw the ball in the middle of the field. And this is the section of the field that the defense will they'll give you because they, you can't get out of bounds. They're going to run. And have the first down. Johnny Hector. Stopped by Fred Marion. 14 yard run. Again, the Jets quickly to the line of scrimmage. Ken O'Brien is only 8 for 24, 84 yards. Another poor day. Did not have a good one last week against the Colts. O'Brien throwing for the end zone, looking to throw it away. The only man in sight was in the Patriot uniform, Roland James. And that stops the clock with 2.32. Remaining fourth quarter. Is, is there something wrong with JoJo Townsell? Because they're going with two tight ends and two wide receivers. Are you saying injury wise? Yeah, I'm just you know you, you think you want to get, get at least three speed guys out there that you, you at least you can move around. The two speed guys you have now they all right. They put Kurt Sohn in and Townsell is flanked to the right side. And O'Brien throwing the middle. Nice catch. By Shula, they continue the hurry up, 14-yard advance, and a first down. So it's first and goal at the six. Now a 2:15 remaining fourth quarter. Bryant got the time and almost picked off by Claiborne. That intended for Sohn. The clock is stopped with 2.09 remaining fourth quarter. He's used his clock very well, you know, even, even though he's thrown, they ran a ball up the middle, they threw the ball twice in the middle of the field. <laughs> and there is JoJo Townsell, four-year player in the NFL out of UCLA. Used as the, uh, the extra receiver, caught only a three this season. Primarily a return man. Second and goal at the six. Schuler in motion. Picked out from the field following McElroy and walks it in. So the Jets do get the touchdown in quick fashion. And have pulled within two points, 14 to 12. With 2:06 remaining, what a in this nice fourth quarter! What a nice call, Marv. And they put Mickey Schuler in in motion, and he comes down and just cuts off the linebacker at the corner. Freeman McNeil just breaks it to the outside. It's touchdown. That's a great call. There, there were two minutes and nine seconds on on the clock. You could run one because you're going to get the clock stopped in two minutes anyway. That play took three seconds. And Leahy drills it through. So McNeil with his fourth touchdown of the season. The Jets now trail the Patriots by the score of 14-13 with two minutes and six seconds remaining. Fourth quarter. You know, we're looking at a situation here. We've got two minutes and six seconds. Now, if they put the ball on the ground on the onside kick, it's going to go to the two-minute warning. That would give New England the ball around midfield. Okay? And pretty much can run the clock out. If not, then go ahead and punt the ball away. I would kick the ball off here. Make them return it. Try to get something that happens on the kickoff return, but keep them deep enough. And if they have the punt and you can get the ball back with maybe 30 or 40 seconds, at least you'll be in halfway decent field position. But I'll probably be wrong, and they're going to bring all these. Yeah, they are. They're bringing all the receivers on. They're going to try an outside kick. Well, Irving Fryer will drop back deep. Fryer moving down to his 20-yard line. And let's see how Pat Leahy and the Jets play it. Now, 
Rembert has to be honored because he's the only linebacker on the field at this moment. Prokop, the, the, the punter's out there. <laughs> There's the only linebacker on the field. Well, of course, he gets all those fumbles. He's got great hands. Prokop is there along with Leahy to try and confuse the Patriots. We don't know which man will do the kicking. But it is Leahy. Onside kick. And covered by the Patriots. Cedric Jones. Wide receiver with the good hands, able to hold on. And with two minutes and three seconds left in this fourth quarter, New England in possession. And they are at the Jet 44-yard line. Look, there, weren't there two minutes and three seconds on the clock when the ball was kicked? 206. 206. Paul, okay. try to pay attention. I was trying to, but then I, I lost it. It was a three seconds. <laughs> but this is going to help the Jets. But again, you know, what, what are you going to do? You got, what, 45 second clock. And Tony hands off to Stevens. Stuck at the line. May have lost the yard on the play. And there is the two minute warning. We'll be back in a moment. Once again, you look at the statistics of Doug Flutie, not very impressive. Six for 20, 78 yards. Stevens, 86 yards on the ground. But here are the Patriots in front once again. And they have played very well these last four weeks. They lead the Jets 14-13. Perryman, the ball carrier. Three-yard advance. Stopped by Robin Cole. And a third down play coming up. That's not very impressive either, is it? Donnie Hector with uh, one of his better games. 83 yards on the ground. But look at uh, Ken O'Brien. O'Brien's sixth straight game with less than 200 yards passing. Marvin, it, it's got, you know, you got to go back and take a look at that. They had a chance to try to kick a 49-yard field goal and did not even take the attempt at it. And they'd be in the Jets. Third and seven. Clock running. Down to a minute and ten left. Fourth quarter. And Perryman has stopped short of the first down. The Jets do not have any timeouts remaining. Kevin MacArthur made the hit. Getting back to that point, Leahy able to connect from long range of 49 and a 47, but they did not go for that uh, particular attempt. Well, 47 and 48, right? And then he, they didn't go for the 49, and he, and he was upset. He had his jacket off. He wanted to make the attempt. It was not raining. But it, here the Patriots, they're just going to go down, and uh, there, there's, we have about 20 seconds on the clock. It's a fourth and five at the 39. That's the 45-second clock. They'll let it uh, run down. So you can follow the 45-second clock and time remaining. And uh, it will be a delay of game with 19 seconds remaining. Well, the New England Patriots looking to make it three straight wins, four of their last five. It's the first of three straight on the road at Miami, then at Indianapolis, before returning home to face Seattle. And if they hold on right here, will be their first victory on the road this season. They're five and one at home, while the Jets next Sunday will play at Buffalo, and then home for Miami. Now Fiegel's back to punt. Only 19 seconds remain. And he'll look to waste some time by uh, getting the ball to bounce around. Townsell is back. Big rush. He goes able to uh, get it off and pops it high. Townsell off the 34-yard punt with the fair catch. And the Jets are down to 12 seconds remaining. 